Hi there and welcome to another car cleaning guru video in which I'll be using this 2014 Corris Grey Range Rover Sport along with its colossal Brembo brake calipers and aftermarket 23 inch project car alloy wheels to compare two popular types of pre-cleaning products in an attempt to show which, if any, is better and why. The rangey wasn't quite as dirty as it hoped for on arrival which is understandable considering it's generally well looked after and that winter road salting hasn't yet commenced here in the UK. However there was just enough unsightly brake dust, road grime and other surface contaminants sitting on the lower areas of the vehicle for me to at least make some comparison between the two and ask which is the better pre-cleaning product, snow foam or traffic film remover? First up was to test out the snow foam, of which I made a stronger than average mix to give the relatively gentle product a fighting chance against the more aggressive traffic foam remover. Focusing on the lower parts of the car for this comparison, as they tend to attract the most dirt, I began by applying a thick layer of snow foam to its front end, wheels, arches, lower doors and sills. before leaving it to soak on the surface for a good 5 minutes to allow it to soften up and break the bond between as much of the dirt and surface contamination as it possibly could. Once the foam had done its dwelling and before it was allowed to dry on the surface or disappear completely, the same areas were then thoroughly rinsed off at pressure to both remove the sudsy residue and the loose dirt particles the pre-wash had now hopefully pulled from the various surfaces. And after letting them partially drip dry, it was time to bring the camera in close to see what level of pre-clean the thick snow foam had provided. The first thing I noticed is that the car was still peppered with heavy tar spots, but to be fair you wouldn't expect a mild snow foam to remove such a stubborn contaminant. The fact that these were now more visible was probably a positive reflection of the product which had done such an effective job at removing the layer of surface dirt that had previously concealed them. The wheels had also almost entirely been rid of their surface brake dust which was impressive considering no contact cleaning had been undertaken, although it's hard to say what role the pressure washing also played in lifting it off over the foam itself. The snow firming definitely made a distinct visible improvement on this well kept car, but tar spots aside there were also a number of other stubborn surface contaminants perhaps not too visible on camera that if you then went on to wash the car could of course cause the dreaded scratches and swirl marks. So a good start for sure, but far from perfect. 
On to the heavier traffic film remover, which like the snow foam I mixed up a strong solution of, diluting approximately 2 litres of the non-caustic product with another 4 of water in a 6 litre pressurised pump spray, before thoroughly applying it to the rear of the Range Rover, as well as its opposing side which hadn't seen any snow foam. Strangely, I find applying a traffic film remover a far more satisfying activity than snow foaming a car, perhaps due to the precise manner in which it can be sprayed into various nooks and crannies with the lightweight wand. Unlike snow foams, traffic film removers can easily stain and damage finishes if left to dry on them and so should be quickly rinsed off. However, the cool damp winter weather here allowed me to capture some close-ups of the pre-cleaner safely soaking on the surface for a few moments first. Rinsing a traffic film remover off at pressure serves not only to remove its potentially harmful residue in the dirt it has penetrated, but also activates its ingredients and so it's important to do a thorough job ensuring all areas are methodically covered from top to bottom. Once rigorously rinsed off and left to partially drip dry, this side of the Range Rover was then scrutinised to see what, if any, difference there was between this and the snow foam parts. Again, a number of tar spots remained, although unlike snow foams, traffic film removers can sometimes serve to soften up tar, which then makes its subsequent removal a little easier. Brake dust was now non-existent, and the shadow chrome finished wheels concealing the red Brembo brake calipers now appeared as if they'd had a proper clean without actually having received any direct contact washing. While the rest of the body treated with the traffic film remover looked very presentable and arguably slightly cleaner than the areas attended to with the snow foam, there were of course still some stubborn surface contaminants left on the car, but considering the aim of a pre-cleaner is to generally just remove as much of the heavier, loose stuff as possible, which of course is why we then go on to wash the car by hand, this is probably as good as it gets for a single product without touching the car. So what can we learn from a quick comparison on a not-so-dirty car between a snow foam and traffic foam remover? 
Well, both are capable of removing light surface dirt and brake dust. Neither are capable of removing stubborn tar spots and heavier bonded contaminants. One is slightly more effective at cutting through dirt, but needs to be used with care to prevent unsightly staining occurring, while the other can be left sitting on the paintwork for minutes at a time without risking damage. In my opinion, snow foams are great for removing light dirt from already well-maintained and protected cars prior to contact washing, and in that sense I see them more of a swirl prevention tool than an effective cleaner, whilst more potent wax-stripping traffic film removers are great for eating through thick layers of road grime and ingrained dirt on cars that haven't been cleaned for some time, or perhaps aren't protected, but admittedly can sometimes be a little overkill. Put simply, cars that I've previously detailed and maintained on a regular basis I'll go with a snow foam, whereas cars that are new to me or are deeply ingrained with dirt I'll use a traffic film remover. If in two minds, however, I'll use both, reserving the stronger traffic film remover for the wheels, arches and lower third of the body first, with the snow foam then being blanketed over the top to cover the rest of the vehicle. This will also serve to extend the drying time of the TFR a little, so you don't have to then rush the rinsing. As always, thanks for watching, hope it was helpful, feel free to leave any suggestions or constructive criticism in the comments below, and I'll be back soon with some winter car cleaning words of wisdom.